Welcome to Force Protection and Anti-Terrorism Level 1 Training. Since 2002, 127 terrorist incidents have occurred in the U.S. Because of your military affiliation, you have an increased risk for becoming involved in a terrorist action. The following information will prepare you with information on force protection and anti-terrorism to include introduction to terrorism, supporting unit security and the AT program, individual protective measures, and respond to threat actions. The DoD considers a terrorist group's operational capability, current activities, intentions, and operating environment when determining terrorism threat levels. The levels range from low where there is either no group or the activity is non-threatening to high where terrorist groups are active in conducting attacks. The first factor is to determine if there are terrorist groups in your area. Second, you need to determine if the terrorist group has a history of violence. If the group is violent, do they specifically target Americans or American interests? Another factor is how active are the organizations in your area? The level of sophistication must be determined for any terrorist group. The amount of local support an organization has can determine if you will receive warning from the local population. An important factor involves determining their tactics and how they plan attacks. And finally, how do they conduct operations and are they predictable? Now that we have talked about threat factors, Let's discuss how terrorists select their victims and identify their targets. You might happen to be in a location targeted by terrorists. Terrorists may look specifically for Americans, or terrorists look for random easy targets of opportunity. Terrorists can identify targets from residential or public gathering areas. Terrorists can use personally identifiable information, or terrorists can use the appearance of importance to select targets. There are several indicators you should be aware of concerning potential terrorist activity. An indication of surveillance can include cameras, note-taking, drawing diagrams, writing on maps, or using binoculars. Elicitation includes gaining information via mail, fax, phone, or in person. Testing security can include attempts to breach security or measure response force reaction tactics and times. Acquiring supplies includes purchasing or stealing materials to conduct the attack. Dry runs are a dress rehearsal for the attack and may involve suspicious activities or events. Deploying assets is the final phase before an attack and your last opportunity to alert authorities. Remember, if you see something, say something. The Eagle Eyes program is a terrorism awareness Air Force initiative with oversight from AFOSI promoting neighborhood watch and is applicable on base and off base. In order to increase your individual protection and respond to threats, we will discuss the following areas. General security, travel security, in transit security, home security, and cybersecurity. General security reminders, always be thinking about OPSEC in your personal and professional life. Remember to be alert and report any suspicious activity. You are the first line of defense. When traveling, whether it is official or unofficial, ensure you attend the required training and country briefings. Always maintain a low profile. When selecting a room, try to avoid the first floor or outward facing rooms. Once you get to your hotel room, make sure you conduct a security inspection. Even when not traveling on official business, being security-minded is good practice. Keep a low profile, remember OPSEC, and use common sense procedures to avoid compromising situations. When traveling to and from work when TDY or deployed, always be aware of your surroundings, be unpredictable, and maintain a low profile. Before using your vehicle, make sure to conduct an inspection. Never touch the vehicle when conducting the inspection or touch suspicious items. If you choose to use public transportation, have a plan and travel with a group when possible. Be inconspicuous and aware of your surroundings. If you need to take a taxi during your trip, look for the distinctive markings of a legitimate taxi company such as logos, color, or vehicle type. When looking for housing, look for areas with low crime, 
buildings or houses with good security features, good lighting, and a view to the street. If you discover security concerns, talk to your landlord about getting them fixed. Consider locks, shrubbery, lighting, and security systems. If you are the owner, consider making the improvements yourself. Once you select a residence, prepare your family in case of an emergency. Consider posting emergency numbers, household rules addressing visitors, and an emergency meeting place. In today's environment, cybersecurity may be as important as physical security. Protect your personal information and secure your social media accounts appropriately. To counter the previous indicators and make yourself less of a target, use these individual protective measures. Be anonymous, plan ahead, be aware of your surroundings, control access, be unpredictable, and be a team player. Now that we have discussed threat factors, target selection and identification, and individual protective measures, we will talk about how you will support unit security programs. The DOD determines the Force Protection Conditions, or FPCONs, based on the threat environment. There are five FPCONs, Normal, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. FPCON Normal is a general threat of possible terrorist activity, and you can expect to see a routine-based security posture. FPCON Alpha is when there is a general threat of possible terrorist activity which is unpredictable against personnel and facilities. You can expect random vehicle checks and increased crime prevention efforts. FPCON Bravo is when an increased and more predictable terrorist threat activity exists. Expect closer inspection of vehicles, deliveries, ID checks, and increased security presence. FPCON Charlie is when an incident occurs or when there is an indication that some form of terrorist targeting against personnel and facilities is imminent. You can expect increased inspection of vehicles and facilities and an increase in security forces augmentation. FPCON Delta is when a terrorist attack has occurred or there is intelligence indicating a terrorist action against a specific location. You can expect an interruption or delay to normal installation routines. As the threat environment or FPCON changes, you can expect multiple countermeasures to occur to protect the base to include RAMs. The final section will cover response to threat actions. Always be on the lookout for suspicious activities or persons. If you see suspicious events or people, report them immediately. Never accept a suspicious package or a package of unknown origin. When traveling, do not accept deliveries to your hotel room. If you receive a package, confirm its authenticity. Do not resist if confronted with deadly force. Do not escalate the situation. Remain calm and respectful. Remember your code of conduct training. Hijacking, while extremely rare, does happen. You should consider how you should react if you end up being in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you find yourself in a hijacking situation, stay alert. Remain calm, don't identify yourself as a military member, and determine your best course of action based on the situation. If preventative measures fail, you may have to respond to the threat. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations is the sole Air Force organization authorized to conduct counterintelligence investigations, operations, collections, functional services, and other related activities. Counterintelligence provides an ability to protect sensitive national security information and to prevent the loss of critical technological, industrial, and commercial information. CI efforts provide a comprehensive security program and constant evaluation of the intentions and targets of foreign intelligence services, and CI programs also work to detect and neutralize the impact of espionage and sabotage against U.S. interests. Intelligence encompasses functions involved in collecting, producing, and distributing data that have strategic, tactical, or technical value from an intelligence viewpoint. Treason is whoever, owing allegiance to the United States, levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort with the United States or elsewhere, is guilty of treason. Espionage involves a government or individual obtaining information that is considered secret or confidential without the permission of the holder of the information. Espionage is inherently clandestine and is a subset of intelligence gathering. 
Sabotage is a deliberate action aimed at weakening another entity through subversion, obstruction, disruption, or destruction. In war, the word is used to describe the activity of an individual or a group's actions resulting in the destruction or damaging of the productive or vital facility such as equipment, factories, dams, public services, or logistic routes. Subversion is an act or acts inciting military or civilian personnel of the Department of Defense to violate laws, disobey lawful orders or regulations, or disrupt military activities with the willful intent thereby to interfere with or impair the loyalty, morale, or discipline of the military forces of the United States. The Traditional Threat For more than 40 years, the United States prepared for a conventional war against the Soviet Union and its allies. The Cold War affected every facet of operations, from weapons procurement to the development of tactic to training at the Combat Training Center. Non-traditional threats today come in the form of terrorism, drug trafficking, serious communicable diseases, piracy, illegal immigration, and information security. Counterintelligence programs provide warning and protective measures against both traditional espionage and non-traditional economic theft of U.S. equities. Failure to protect our economic and security interests would impact America's prosperity at home and abroad. Individuals who have reportable contacts or acquire reportable information must immediately, within 30 days of the contact, report the contact or information either verbally or in writing to AFOSI. Individuals are required to report when unauthorized intrusion into U.S. automated information systems, networks, or other cyber capabilities, whether classified or unclassified. Unauthorized transmissions of classified or unclassified controlled information without regard to medium, destination, or origin must be reported to AFOSI. Incidents or behaviors that are otherwise reportable must be reported to the supporting AFOSI or CI office. Remember, contact means any exchange of information directed to an individual, including solicited or unsolicited telephone calls, text messages, interaction via social media, and networking websites, email, radio contact, etc., in addition to face-to-face -face meetings and repeated contact with a foreign national. Remember, counterintelligence is information gathered and activities conducted to protect against espionage and sabotage, and it's your responsibility to report any and all incidents or contacts. This presentation is part of a series to make you aware of the emergencies that could affect your installation or local community and the steps you can take to be ready. An active shooter is one or more persons who participate in a random or systematic shooting with the intent to continuously harm others. Active shooter incidents are unpredictable and can take place in a split second. Columbine High School and Sandy Hook Elementary School are reminders of just how unpredictable and devastating these types of incidents can be. The military has a history of active shooter incidents dating back almost two decades, and victims of both communities, civilian and military, have been affected. In recent years, there have been shootings at Fairchild Air Force Base, Fort Bragg, Andrews Air Force Base, Fort Hood, and the Washington Navy Yard. Not being prepared to respond to an active shooter incident can have a disastrous outcome. The best way to prepare for an active shooter incident is to create an emergency action plan before it's needed. Developing a plan will help you become more familiar with your surroundings. It will also help you in identifying any potential escape routes or an area that might provide protection should an active shooter incident occur. Knowing where you are in relation to the shooter could very well save your life. If you're outside the immediate incident area when lockdown is declared via the installation's warning and notification systems, remain calm and quickly determine the most reasonable way to protect your life. Initiate facility lockdown procedures and do not allow individuals to enter or exit the area during lockdown until the all clear is announced. If you're inside the immediate incident area, decide if you should escape, barricade, or fight. Try to escape if the shooter is not close and you have a clear and safe path to an exit. Consider all windows and doors escape routes. Notify others of your escape and make sure not to move toward the threat. An option to consider when escaping is too dangerous is to create a barricade between you and the active shooter. Close and lock all doors. Move heavy objects such as office furniture, printers, and tables in front of entryways. Remain quiet, cover all the windows, and turn off any light sources. Notifying local law enforcement of an active shooter should always be considered, but only if you can do so safely. 
Flight may be your only option and may offer you the best chance of survival if you are directly confronted with a shooter. If you have no other option other than to commit to the fight, don't stop. Throw objects at the shooter's head. Focus on weak points, eyes, nose, groin, and throat. When you attack, hit hard, hit fast, and hit often. When law enforcement arrive, their main priority is to eliminate the threat. Remain calm. Do not panic, scream, or yell. Spread your fingers and raise your hands. Follow all instructions given by law enforcement. Once you're in a safe location, you should notify your leadership and family of your current status. After the incident is over, you may have a hard time coping. Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is the persistent mental and emotional stress occurring as a result of injury or severe psychological shock. Make sure you are able to recognize the signs and ways to cope with PTSD. Hopefully this information has helped you better prepare for what to do before, during, and after an active shooter incident. For more information, please take the time to visit your installation's Office of Emergency Management or the Be Ready website. This has been Corey DeBrunier reporting for the Emergency Management Division of the Air Force Civil Engineer Center. Stay safe and be ready.